Good morning and welcome. My name's Howard Kaplan. This past February, I joined the Mount Sinai family as its new general manager. Over the past few months, I've had the good fortune to work with the wonderful staff at Mount Sinai and the clergy from Sinai Temple in planning this year's 64th annual Kever of Oath services. It's my pleasure on behalf of Angela Mahdi, President of Sinai Temple, Eric Diamond, Chairman of the Sinai Temple Cemetery Management Committee, the Sinai Temple clergy, and the staff here at Mount Sinai Memorial Parks and Mortuaries to welcome you to this Kever of Oat Memorial Service. Last year, my predecessor, Lynn Lawrence, announced the um, beginning of our digital yard site program. And I just wanted to bring this up because it's a wonderful service to the entire Jewish community. If you go on our website, you can go on and register and you will annually for all your loved ones' yard sites get an email reminder of when that yard site is. Um, often many of us have trouble remembering or finding the little thing that has those dates, especially if we follow the Hebrew date. So I encourage you to use that service. It is free to all. This morning's service will be led by Rabbi Nicole Guzik and Cantor Marcus Feldman of Sinai Temple. And we also welcome the Sinai Temple Choir, directed and accompanied by Mr. Ariel Cohen. Before we go further, if you have a cell phone with you, I left mine in the office so I wouldn't have to remember to turn it off. Please turn the sound off, or better yet, just turn off the cell phone. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Eric Diamond, Chairman of the Cemetery Management Committee of Sinai Temple. Good morning, Lashana Tova. And for those of us whose grandparents, great-grandparents, parents, or we ourselves come from Europe, good yuntif to you. So as Mr. Kaplan just said, for more than 60 years, it has been the privilege of Sinai Temple to operate Mount Sinai as a service to the entire Jewish community. It is my great privilege for the past two years to chair the volunteer committee that oversees the operations of this cemetery, our other cemetery in Simi Valley, and our mortuary. We are the largest cemetery and mortuary serving the Jewish community in Southern California. And I believe I speak for all of us in saying that we believe we provide a service to the community that is second to none. We're very proud of the fact 
that we bury every indigent Jew without charge. We are even more proud of the fact that any family that loses a child, there is no charge for any service associated with that loss. These are symbolic of our commitment to the community. As one Jew stands for another, we stand for the entire community. We are very proud of the fact that each year we give out hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants to various organizations within our community. We support Israel, seniors, children in schools, synagogues and community organizations, and the areas adjacent to our parks. This again is our commitment to the entire Jewish community of Southern California. We are here as each of us is here, one for another. So that's my greeting to you. Mount Sinai is here for you just as you have been here for one another. And with that, I wish you all Gamar Chatima Tova. May we all be sealed in the Book of Life for a good year, a healthy year, a happy year, a prosperous year. And may I hopefully, with God's blessing, see all of you again at this service next year. Shana Tova, everyone. A happy and healthy new year. I'll ask everyone to please rise as we begin our Kever Avot service on page three. I'd like to call forward Congregate Michael Bordy Ford, as is his tradition to be here with us this morning to sound the shofar. The sound of the shofar calls us to worship as a reminder of our eternal connection to God who provides us life, and as well to honor those whose love and memory resides in our hearts forever. We begin on page three. <laughs> Please be seated. We continue in the middle of page three. Shiviti Adonai like Nagdi Tamid. Daisy Miller will lead us in a responsive reading. We remember them, found on page four. In the rising of the sun and in its going down. In the blowing of the wind in the chill of winter. In the opening of the buds in the rebirth of spring. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of the summer. We remember them. In the rusting of the leaves and the beauty of the autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year, when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have decisions that are difficult to make, 
to remember them. When we have achievements that are based on theirs, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them. It's our tradition in this service to offer a Misha Berach Lecholim, a blessing of healing to those who are in need of physical, emotional, and spiritual healing. Cantor Feldman will lead us in that prayer, and I encourage all of you, if you have someone's name you'd like to include in that prayer, or maybe the person is yourself, when he begins the recitation in the Hebrew, that you offer that prayer out loud by offering that person's name. Cantor Feldman will lead us, but please hold that person's name on your lips, whispering their name so that we can include, woven within us, a tapestry of prayer. Misha Barak Lecholim, found on page five, holding our loved ones close. Our Mount Sinai Book of Memorial honors those who lost their lives in the Holocaust, and every year at Kever Avot, we open the book and light a special candle in their memory. Daisy Miller, co-founder of the World Federation of Jewish Child Survivors of the Holocaust and Descendants, will be reciting the prayer for the martyrs. Please rise. Exalted, compassionate God, 
Grant perfect peace among the holy and the pure in your sheltering presence to the souls of all our brethren, men, women, and children of the Holocaust and the House of Israel, martyrs of our people who gave their lives for the saddest sanctification of his name. May their bravery, dedication, and purity be reflected in our lives. May their memory endure inspiring truth and loyalty in our lives. May their souls be bound up in bond of life. And may they rest eternally in dignity in peace. Amen. We continue in our service, bottom of page five. Av HaRachamim.
Many of you know, and as Eric mentioned earlier at the beginning of the service, Mount Sinai hosts two Kever Avot services, one here in Hollywood Hills and another this afternoon at Simi Valley, and I have the honor of officiating at both. For me, and I hope for all of you, this is a very special gathering as we pay tribute to our loved ones of blessed memory and together. Together as one congregation, we mark the beginning of the Jewish New Year. And so because I feel this connection to you year after year, I want to share something with you that happened one year ago. My husband, Eris Sherman, is also a rabbi at Sinai Temple. And he received a phone call on the second day of Rosh Hashanah last year. His older brother, Eyal Sherman, older by 17 months, was suffering from cardiac arrest. Eyal had been physically ill his entire life. At the age of four, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And shortly after, because of complications, was left as a quadriplegic, unable to eat without a feeding tube, unable to speak, confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life. But Eyal, during his life, was a miracle man. He was an artist. He would paint pictures of roses and biblical characters using only his mouth. He went from elementary school to junior high to high school to college, proudly wheeling his wheelchair across the stage in order to receive his degree. So on one hand, my husband was preparing his entire life to get that phone call. And on the other hand, he thought it would never happen. Truly, we all felt unprepared. So Ares flew to Philadelphia, but it was at Mount Sinai in Simi Valley one year ago, just hours after this service was complete here in Hollywood Hills, that Ares would call me on my phone and cry out the words, Nicole, they all just died. Baruch Dayan Emet. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you today is not only to reveal a piece of our lives with you, but also to share a lesson of faith. As you heard, Cantor Feldman and our choir and Ariel Cohen just led us in the Misha Berach prayer, a prayer that we sing in both of our Kever Avot services. This prayer for healing in which we ask for physical and emotional well-need for those that we love. Well, it was here in Hollywood Hills at this very service in which I recited my brother-in-law's name within that prayer for the very last time. I knew how sick he was, and like many of you, I included my loved one in exactly what I had described before in this tapestry of prayer. But here's what happened. After my husband called to tell me the news of Eyal's passing, we started that Simi Valley service, and we recited the Misha Berach again. And when I asked the congregation to include the names for blessing and for healing, it dawned on me, no longer. No longer would I be adding Eyal's name to that prayer. This was a prayer that I would recite, like many of you, every Shabbat. Every single time I had a chance to include Eyal's name in a prayer for healing, I would, but here I was. And at the time, I couldn't help but think, it's the same words. I just recited the same words a few hours ago, but now everything is different. 
I think so many of us can relate to the scenario because often our most formative Jewish experiences, from standing to hear the words of Kol Nidre, sitting around the Seder table, lighting Shabbat or Hanukkah candles, or being taught the words of the Shema, so many moments were shaped by people no longer standing by our side. And we can't ignore the wistfulness or the twinge of longing that we feel when we re-enter these moments. These spaces, these songs, these melodies, because the food might be the same. The prayers contain the exact same words, but we come back, we return, sometimes with misshaped hearts, sometimes feeling like something, like someone is missing. In Rabbi Naomi Levy's book, Einstein and the Rabbi. She writes about the time in which her mother passed away. A mentor of hers said, Naomi, the Kaddish, the mourner's Kaddish that you say in April, it's not the same Kaddish that you say in November. Well, a friend overheard the conversation and asked Rabbi Levy, are there really two different Kaddishes for different months of the year? And Rabbi Levy replied, no, it's the same Kaddish, but you're in a different place. She writes, at first, it's a Kaddish of anguish, of an open wound, an empty ache, and with each passing month, it takes on a different tone and a different color. She continues that sometimes I would say the Kaddish like a robot. Sometimes I would feel a tug. Sometimes I felt such a sweet feeling sitting in the morning prayer service wrapped in my mother's prayer shawl, the one that she wore at her bat mitzvah, saying Kaddish for her. Rabbi Levy's description of reciting the Kaddish reminds me of the following famous Hasidic story. Every day a little boy would go out into the woods searching and traveling all over, day after day, spending hours looking for something. He would always go home to his father, and one day the father took the little boy by the hand and said, son, what are you doing? Every day you go outside searching. What is it that you're looking for? And the little boy replied, well, dad, I'm looking for God. And the father looked at his son in the eye and said, I don't understand. Son, don't you know that God is the same everywhere? You can just stay inside and speak to God. You don't need to search so hard. And the little boy looked back at his father with a little sadness and a bit of pain and replied, Dad, God may be the same everywhere but I'm not. We come back to our prayers year after year. Same prayers, often the same melodies, but oh, how we have changed. The seconds of the clock go by and we grow, experiencing joy and sorrow, love and loss. And while the prayers stay steady, we continue to search, sometimes wondering how do we exist in this world without our beloveds? How do we maintain faith in moments of challenge and anguish, asking God, why am I here? Why am I the one to recite these prayers? The prayers may be the same, but oh, how my questions pile up. Oh God, how we have changed. But through my reflections, I'm wondering if this is the genius of our tradition. Perhaps the rituals and the order and the prayers and the words are all meant to stay the same. That somehow the rabbis understood that we are ever changing. That our search may never be over the profound emptiness we may feel over the death of a loved one, the anger and anguish that sometimes takes root in our souls, 
the trepidation that moves in when we feel lost in this world, those steady, unchanging words remind us that we aren't expected to stay the same. Because when we get lost, there's always a rope a chain of tradition pulling us back, anchoring us, keeping us from falling over. The Maharal of Prague calls each human being an upside-down tree. He explains that we get our sustenance from our God-given souls, but I extend the metaphor just a bit. I believe the souls of the departed nourish our spirit in ways we can only imagine. It's our steady faith that guides us from below and our loved one's unconditional love that embraces us from the world above. And so I continue to recite that Misha Berach prayer. I recited it along with the cantor and Ariel in the choir. Words that remind me of how much we are in need of strength, courage, hope, and love. My brother-in-law's name may be missing but in a way, I like to think that he's here this morning reciting the prayer with all of us, reminding me that while this prayer will never feel the same, it's not supposed to. Some days it'll bring me comfort. Other days it will make me long for a y'all in ways I can barely describe. But the words will be there. An assurance that in our own searching, we may get lost. But our faith, our faith will guide us out of the woods. During this high holy day season, may the words of our faith hold us steady. Words that stay the same, embracing our ever-changing lives. Our tradition is a beacon of light, reminding us as we search for hope, God's candle stays lit, beckoning us home. May the memories of our loved ones forever be a blessing. May we all be inscribed in the book of life. Amen. I'll ask everyone to please rise at this time. As we recall our loved ones with the El Malay Rachamim, our memorial prayer, which is found on page six.
God, full of compassion, who dwells on high, grant perfect rest beneath the sheltering wings of your divine presence, among the holy and pure who shine as the brightness of the firmament unto our loved ones who have gone to their eternal home. Author of mercy, bring them under the shelter of your wings. Let their soul be bound up in the bonds of eternal life. God, may you be their inheritance, and may they rest in peace. Amen. Please take a few moments for silent reflection, bringing your loved one's memory into your heart. Please take your time. I'd like to invite Eric Diamond Ford to read for us Rabbi Wolfie's translation of The Lord is My Shepherd, found on page 8. The Lord is my shepherd, Adonai Roi. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Wounded with death and loss, we do not remain in the place of destination. Movement is the invariable law of the spirit. There is no life without the valley. But to believe in the reality of the valley alone, to neglect the reality of the mountain, is to forget how to live. What is it that allows us to make our way through the nation of the earth? Built in the spread of the talit and the spread of the cloud covering is the same message. God is with you, above you, around you. Your journey will not be easy, but it is assured. Deep faith does not insist that God cushion our steps. Not for ease, but we know that the author of the 23rd Psalm has walked the valley. We know too that he has come to sing to us of his lessons and of the God whose mercy saw him through. Cantor Feldman leads us, page 9, Mismor le David, Adonai Roi.
Reciting Affirming Our Love this morning is Angela Madahi, Sinai Temple President. Affirming Our Love. When Kaddish is recited, we affirm our love for those so near and dear who have physically left us. Our love, however, does not rest on physical survival. It is deeper than that. When we love, we love the inner being of the beloved, the quality that makes for uniqueness, the spirit that creates personality and character. That love does not ever disappear. It remains within us as long as we live. With time, we learn to handle the never-ending pain of loss, but that does not erode the affection and emotions we feel for the one who no longer moves about in our midst. We know that whatever lives must someday die. That, however, is true only of the material world. The spiritual can endure forever. When we lose one who is dear, we mourn, but we must not mourn excessively. We must be grateful for what we have had and find comfort in our memories. We affirm our love as we rise at this time to recite the Mourner's Kaddish together, which is found on page 12. Encourage everyone to keep the name of your loved ones on your lips as we recite this prayer together. Page 12. Yit gadal ve'yit kadash shemei raba ve'alma divra kerute v'yamlich malchute Bechaychon of Yomechon of Chaye de Hobe Israel, Baagala of Isman Kari Vimru Amen. Yehe Shme Raba Mevarach, Le Alam Ulome Omaya. Yit Barach, Beishtabach, Vit Paar, Vit Romam, Vit Nase. Vit Hadar, Vita Le, Vit Halal, Shme de Kudisha, Brifu. Le Ela Ule Ela Miko Birchata Vishirata Tush Bechata Venechemata De Amiran Beoma Vimru Amen Yehe Shlama Raba Minshemaya Vehaim Tovim Alenu Velko Yisrael Vimru Amen O Se Shalom Vimromav Hu Ya Ase Shalom Alenu Velko Yisrael Vimru Amen Please be seated. We continue with Osei Shalom, bottom of page 13.
Ribbono Shaolam, Master of the Universe. In this ever changing world, we pray that the words of our tradition and the comfort of our faith provides an anchor to steady our souls and heal our hearts. As this new year begins, let the memories of our loved ones provide nourishment and growth, allowing us to walk each day of our lives serving as a blessing to others and to God. May this new year be one of health, joy, and peace. May we all be inscribed in the book of life. And let us say, Amen. As you have noticed, as have I, this beautiful prayer book that Mount Sinai has compiled for us, we encourage all of you to take your prayer book home either to use today in the back of their prayer book are several prayers recited at graveside, or take it home so that you can have your own moments of reflection and prayer, taking home a piece of today's service, hopefully inspiring your new year. We conclude our services with Villado. We are found on page 14. My soul I give to you, my spirit in your care. Draw me near, I shall not fear. Hold me in your hand. Draw me near, I shall not fear, safely in your hand. Led by Cantor Bellman, Bayado, page 14. Our service will conclude with the final blast of the shofar. Um, before that, we want to 
we hope that today's service offered comfort and peace. We're always looking for feedback, so please take a moment to fill out the comment card that was in your prayer book and drop it off at the registration tables. Um, on behalf of everyone here, I want to thank our staff here at Mount Sinai Memorial Parks and Mortuaries who've spent many hours, especially Gail Levy and Mar Molly Yarsyk, who've spent countless hours coordinating this service for all of us um, so that we can remember our loved ones. So on behalf of our staff and the management of the Memorial Parks and Sinai Temple, we wish everyone a happy, healthy, and peaceful new year. The Shana Tova. Shana Tova, everyone. Thank you for coming.